This episode is sponsored by two amazing companies. First, we have 99designs. Listen, if you're looking for a new business card, a new logo, a new website, something for marketing, whatever. If you need graphic arts, if you need something created, if you need something taken from your mind, your thought process and created on paper, in print, on the internet, these guys know how to get it done for you. And they give you a ton of options to choose from. Guys, super endorsed by Tim Ferriss. 99designs, check them out. Go to davidihill.com, davidihill.com. Click on the affiliates link and you'll see 99designs and just click the link and check them out. The other one is Land Voice. If 2017, part of your goal is prospecting, then you need to check these guys out. They have access to the for sale by owner for you, expired listings, a circle prospecting, giving you all the phone numbers you need to make those prospecting calls. So check out Land Voice. Same thing. Go to my site, davidihill.com, affiliates, and you just click on the Land Voice link and you can see all the specials they've got. They've got like $30 a month specials going on right now. You can try their service out. No contract, $30. If you love it, you keep going. If you don't, you stop. You, you just can't beat it. So guys, check out our sponsors, all right? And enjoy. Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. Hey Masters, welcome to another step on your path to sales mastery. And this week, I am bringing you a rock star. Guys, listen to this. Number one, yes, number one real estate agent, real estate team, whatever you want to call them, in Massachusetts, okay? Number one broker in Massachusetts, Anthony Lamakia. And these guys are killing it. Listen, I remember where I started in the business 12 years ago. And I saw this guy, he, he was with Remax back then. They were doing TV ads, not just TV ads, but TV ads like, you know, prime time, you know, eight at night. And I was like, man, that's awesome. And you know what? Hey, obviously it works. And after talking to Anthony, you know, I know him. I've run into him multiple times at events. This guy's a gentleman. He's a professional. He's a family man. He's a really, really good guy. And uh, just good to get to know. And, and he, he's a systems guy, which I didn't know that much about him. But he's really a big systems guy. He tracks numbers, tracks everything. And that's led to his success. So this is a great interview. Listen, check this guy out. He knows what he's talking about. You know, no, like I said, number one in Massachusetts. Uh, the other thing I want to throw out there for you Anybody who knows me knows for me, health, my friends, is number one. Health, number one for me. You know, Gary Keller, a few years ago in one of his top agent masterminds said, if I don't take care of my body, where am I going to live? How profound is that, right? If I don't take care of my body, where am I going to live? So I started using AdvoCare products about a year ago. Never really got into them. I just used the Spark and some of the energy drinks. And about a, uh, right before the new year, I did the challenge. And the challenge was just phenomenal. And, you know, from doing the challenge, you know, I didn't really lose any weight. What I did was I actually got cut pretty good, shredded, and, and gained a couple pounds of muscle. Uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I feel great energy. I'm taking wellness products for, for sleeping. For information on the products, go to my site, which is livelongersmarter.com. Livelongersmarter.com. Or hey, just reach out to me through Facebook. I'll have a personal conversation with you. So hey, I just want to throw that out there because again, if you know me, you know for me it's number one. Work out six days a week. So if anybody's interested, I'd love to have a conversation with you about your goals for health, nutrition, wellness. If it's weight loss, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Richie Ryan, just lost 17 pounds, my friends, on the 24-day challenge. So hey, we'd love to have a conversation with you. Anything I can do to help with your needs. Um, for now, let's focus on Anthony Lamakia, number one Massachusetts guys. Take some of these nuggets, get your notepads out. One more step on your path to sales mastery. Hey, Masters. Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today I'm with Anthony Lamakia. And Anthony is a broker with Lamakia Realty in Massachusetts. Not only that, Anthony's a really cool guy. What's up, Anthony? Hello, my friend. Thanks very much for having me on. I've heard good things about this podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. We're growing. And, you know, it's always good to run into you. I know we just saw each other at the Boston event. And every time I've seen you, uh, just nothing but good things. And, uh, you know, you're always professional, carrying yourself awesome. So 
Uh, and congrats on your awesome success. Let me, uh, I'm going to go through your bio for our listeners just so they get to know a little bit about you. I know you guys started, you started in a business in 2004. Is that correct? Yeah, I was in a family business and I remember breaking the news to my dad that I was going to get out of it. I was in landscape construction and that went over like a lead balloon. And, uh, but once I got past that by 06, I was full time in the business. Okay, cool. And I know you're, you're very much involved in many committees, uh, the Mass Association of Realtors, Government Affairs, the Boston uh, Board of Realtors. Uh, you're a, a director. You're on uh, Boston Television. I mean, I see you all the time, like Boston. I don't know if it's Fox News or NBC, one of the news channels. We, we know we see yeah, you. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, I had a good relationship with the news stations. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> but it's been going on about six years. I've been an expert for a lot of them. Fox, like you mentioned, NBC, ABC. I was on, um, you know, Channel 5 about 60 days ago talking about mortgage rates. And I got a couple things coming up here as we release a lot of reports in the next, in the coming weeks for last year. So been able to keep busy with that stuff. And, you know, that helps with credibility. It doesn't necessarily drive leads in, but it certainly helps with credibility. Yeah, you would think so. You know, and I want to get back to that. And a couple other things, you're, you're involved in uh, the Boston Globe. You have a regular column. You're number one in uh, Massachusetts. You've been that way for a lot of years, so I've always respected you for that. And you guys, you know, you do a good job. I know we've had the opportunity to do a couple transactions together with, with one of my teams, and you guys have always done a, done a great job. You're recognized as one of the fastest growing companies in Mass. Man, you got all this good stuff. And you're uh, on the 500, Inc. 500 uh, list of the fastest growing private companies in America. So congratulations, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Man, you're just killing We're trying, me. my friend. We're trying. We're not perfect, but we're trying. No, well, you're doing something right, man. And I, re- <laughs> I always remember we did that panel together. I don't know. It must have been like six or seven years ago. And you are, uh, you are awesome. Yeah. So listen, tell us about... Uh, well, first, And you do a lot with TV as well. I mean, I see... And it's yeah. not just like TV, you know. I mean, you're on prime time. I mean, we see you 8 o'clock at night, 10 in the morning... And you've been doing that for a long time. I remember years ago, you were, I think I used to see, was it Remax? Were you with Remax? Yeah, originally. Good memory. Good yeah. Memory. When I first started on television in 06, we were with Remax. And that was when it was me, my ex business partner, and our assistant, who's now the vice president of my company. And um, we just started on television and hoped for the best. And it worked out well. And, you know, some years have been better than others. Now that the market's really hot, it doesn't, it does not work as well as it used to. But it also, as far as bringing leads in, but there's other benefits to it for our company. We obviously have a big plans and um, it, it helps it helps our brand for sure. Yeah. So tell us about that when you say it doesn't bring in a lot, but it helps your brand. So like, because I, I know I see it. I mean, do people call and say, hey, wow, I saw you on television or I mean, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah, of course. We get that. And we, we used to get tons of it. Now it's not quite as much as it used to be. What I found over the years, it's been 11 years, is... When the market's not doing well and you run, like, for example, a guaranteed sale program, you know we have a guaranteed sale program. So if the market's slow and we run that, it works works well. It works really well. Um, When the market's busier, it doesn't work as well. And that's just the truth. You know you know me. I tell it like it is. I don't BS. And uh, that's just what it comes down to. So, you know, we pivot and we move and we have leads in different ways. But uh, overall, TV's been a good tool for us, for sure. I'm not denying that. Good stuff. And and I think part of TV is, you know, for a lot of our listeners, including myself, I, I you know, we're actually going to be exploring radio this year for the first time. But yep. it's getting past that mindset of, I, I would say, an abundant mindset where it, I've got to invest because it's, it's not it's not for everybody because it's it's a big investment, right? Well, yeah, and it'll tap you out. I mean, I remember when I started on it in 06, I was down in Arizona and a friend of mine who kind of got me going on it, he said to me, look, when you go back, don't increase the budget too quick. Because if you do, you could tap out because it takes so many months to get the money back. And I was like, all right, all right, I won't. And I got back and just started working and we hit the gas with the budget. And sure enough, like 90 or 120 days later, we were like, oh, my God, we're going to run out of money. <laughs> mm. But uh, we, we managed to get through it and, uh, you know, came out OK from it. But it was kind of funny. So there's a bit of an art to how you do it. And there's it takes years to figure out what months are better than others and what months are a waste of money. And, you know, and it changes. Every time we think we get it figured out, the market changes. And we go, geez, that month wasn't as good as it was last year. So it's like anything else that you do when you're running a business. You have got to be a walking, paranoid machine paying attention to everything because as soon as you take your eye off of things, 
you know, it, it can get ugly fast. So mm. we're always paying attention. We have all kinds of fancy dashboards and uh, all kinds of things in our CRM that we custom built that, you know, keeps us in the loop with what is going on on all areas of the company. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, I you said it earlier too. You have the guaranteed sale program, and then yep. you're always adapting, like like us. I mean, you know, in 2010, we were doing first time buyers. I think that was the year the buyer credit came back, and it was short That's sales, right. and it was the REOs in in 2012. So we've always adapted, and you have to be able to do that. Now, you mentioned you had some type of um, product or CRM or something that. How, how does that work? Tell us a little bit about that. Like, how do you how do you see what's coming? Like, wh- how do you adapt to that? Well, what we did is we used to run our business. I don't know if you remember the program, but we used to run the company on agent office, um, and that was a you know an old CRM. And then uh, we had years ago when we had like we years ago when we were a team model, we used to have you know buyers agents, listing agents, and we would have the outside agents. Uh, well, the buyer's agents be on top producer. So there was a couple of years there. We had two CRMs going. It was nothing but a pain. Mm. Um, and then we had nine separate Excel spreadsheets that we were tracking for years on all different areas of the company. You know, how many leads, how many appointments are we booking? How many appointments are we attending of the uh, attended appointments? How many are we signing up? Whether it was buyer or seller, you know, of the ones we're signing up, how many are we selling? And we literally used these dashboards to monitor the company, but it was extremely labor intensive. Hmm. So I made a decision back in 2014 to basically custom build the CRM, a customer relationship management system on the Salesforce platform. And um, it, what it does is it, it handles all our clients, buyers, sellers, everybody, but it also does the tracking for us. So we're only doing data entry one time as opposed to, Years ago, we had you know a CRM. Then we had all these different trackers. We we had a lead tracker, a taken tracker, a you know a sold tracker. It was pathetic. We were typing people's names in ten different times. Now it's all in one, and um, we custom built it. And it's it's been a lot of work and a lot more money than I thought. But it's really, really a wonderful tool to run the company on and monitor the company on. We all have it on our mobile devices. My entire leadership team has dashboards on their mobile mobile devices, um, even financials. Myself and our vice president has. We can pull up, see what our receivables are, see how many. You know, I can heck, I can tell you numbers right now if you want to know. You know how many how many seller leads have we had this week? So far this week, we've had ten. How many appointments have been booked? Five. How many listing appointments have been completed? One. How many future appointments this week? Nine. Uh, how many listings have been taken so far this week? Six. So wow. we track metrics like that all the time. And that's, you know, that's just on the listing side. And then we, you know, for buyers, we track identical types of things. You know what I mean? Just to know where we're at at all times. So it sounds like, you know, you're really a numbers guy. You're really into tracking. Have you always been like that or when did that start? No, I've always been like that. We, we, we I remember we started on television on Saturday. Uh, it was like the last Saturday of July in 2006. And, we got a handful of leads. A lot of them were from far away. I remember the first lead we ever got was in Canada. And we're like, how do these people see us? But anyway, that's beside the point. That Sunday, I built a spreadsheet, and it was very basic. And then we just kept like building it, building it, building it from there. Um, but we track everything. Because if you don't, you don't know. I mean, if you're not tracking, how do you know where you're going? Yeah. And you got to do it consistently. So, I mean, if you would say, you know, you're obviously successful, Anthony. You guys are been number one in mass for... Uh, I don't know what since 2010 with the real estate companies is that because you track numbers, what would you say makes you guys successful? Like why are you more successful than all the other brokers? Well, I mean, there's some, there's, we obviously have some good competitors out there. Uh, you're still included, but w- I think that we we're obviously aggressive with our marketing. We're consistent. We have good systems and we track. Oh, and we train. I probably should have said train first. We do a significant amount of training. Uh, that's probably the single most important thing we do now. And, you know, our company has changed, as you know. We used to just be a real estate team. Not that not that being a real estate team is bad. I mean, it's like the most profitable way of doing this business. But now we're we're becoming more of a traditional brokerage. So, you know, we're at the point now where just about half our revenue is agent-generated uh, business and half our revenue is company-generated business. So we basically track it two different ways, company lead or agent lead. And you know, agents are paid, you, you know, depending on how, whichever one that is. So tell us the difference I'm, for our listeners. I'm not like, what's the difference between agent versus company? Well, we, you know, we do a lot of advertising. We provide agents with leads. We have some agents in the company that 
barely need any leads. We have some agents that don't need any leads. Then we have some agents that are very dependent on leads. So got we it. make it very simple. We just tell people, hey, if you need leads, we'll provide you leads, but you've got to come to training. You've got to follow the system and you've got to hit our performance minimums when you're getting leads, period. You know, years ago, it was a little more like, um, oh, hey, is that person doing what they're doing now? We just say, it's all about the numbers. You don't hit your performance minimums, you don't get leads. You know, and don't get me wrong, we're not ruthless. If someone's trying very hard and they're struggling to hit them, we try very hard to get them there before we were to pull the plug. Of Pulling course. the plug on leads is the last option. We're not trying to hurt anyone. You were listening to One More Sale. Yeah, so what you're referring to is, you know, some people are able to go out and generate their own leads uh, where other agents are more dependent on, uh, you know, the company feeding them leads, like teaching somebody to fish as yeah, opposed and, and to usually it's, feeding. Exactly, and usually it's the newer agents. What we find is that agents that are one to three years in the business that come here, they're more dependent on, on company leads. And then as time goes on, they have more of their own business. If they follow our system and our trainings with, hey, stay in touch with your clients, you know, after they sell, stay in touch with people three or four years, they're getting an abundance of referrals. Then they don't need as many company leads. And we just slow down the company leads. They chase their own business. And then we're able to pay them more. If they're, if they're bringing the business in, they're able to get a higher split. You know yeah. what I mean? And we don't have a problem paying it. Yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. So tell us about your numbers. What did you guys do last year for volume? For a company, you know, <laughs> you won't believe this, but I haven't added it all up. But I believe we were somewhere between 280 and 300 million in volume. And we sold, I think, 806 houses. Wow, good for you. So what do I need to do to get you guys over to Keller Williams? That's a magic question there, right? <laughs> there, is, there is nothing you could do. I, I'll tell you, though, I think Keller Williams is a good company. Um, I think that you know they have a lot of good things going for them. I frankly think that you guys are probably my biggest competitor because you guys do a lot of training and I do too. Oh, yeah. That's a niche for me and it's a niche for you guys. So I think we're probably, right now, you're my biggest competitor. I don't think I'm big enough to be KW's biggest competitor, but I will get there. Mark my words. <laughs> no doubt, my friend. Well, hey, and you know, I, I appreciate that. And I'm just, I'm just messing with you a little bit. Obviously, Keller Williams, we are, we are a training company that sells real estate. That's what we call ourselves, and we're the largest in the world. So, but that said, talk to us about, you know, we, we talked about your numbers. Uh, you're, you're definitely a numbers guy. You're, it sounds like you're a real systems guy. What's the biggest challenge right now? Like, what's your biggest challenge? Um, right now, the biggest challenge. Probably bringing in an abundance of seller leads. You know, now that the market is hot, it is much easier for people to just call any Joe Small realtor up the street who will give them a low commission and list their home. You know, the inventory is low, so it's much easier for sellers to do that. So I would say that's probably our biggest challenge right now. I mean, you know, every year it's something new. <laughs> yeah. We're not struggling with our systems or with marketing or with training or bringing agents in. We've, we've tripled this, our agent count in the last uh, 13 months. But I would say bringing in this, you know, years ago I would bring in an abundance of seller leads. Now it's, it's a little bit more challenging. So we're dealing with that and adapting. So you're dealing with the same thing we're dealing with. Inventory is extremely low and it's much harder to get those, those sellers to pull the trigger. Why is that? Well, you know, here's the funny thing, and, and you know I study the market a lot because I talk about it on the news a lot, but the, the thing is, up until December, last year, the amount of homes that were actually listed for sale was actually very similar to the year before. The reason the inventory is so low, right now it's the lowest level it's been in 20 years, is because pending sales is way up. So the homes are getting eaten up. I call it the Pac-Man effect. Remember when we were kids, the game Pac-Man? Yeah, man, that was awesome. That was the boss game well, right there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> the thing is, it's like the Pac-Man effect. So the homes are getting eaten up. But what I think happens is as the homes get eaten up and they sell faster, it is sellers don't, they're not realizing that, yes, it is easier for any realtor to sell your home. But they don't, what sellers don't quite understand is there's a difference. Anybody, I don't want to say anybody can sell a house, but most any realtor in this market can sell a home. The difference is, can they sell it for more? Yes. You know, can they sell it for more? And that, and sellers don't totally see that light. They don't totally understand that. I mean, we get people that, you know, sometimes they call here, especially in the fall when there's more expires, and say, you know, I listed with so-and-so, and my house didn't sell, and I thought they were the one to go with. They're up the street, and they charge me, a, you know, X percent commission. It was a good deal. And, I, and you know, and I, I don't say, but our agents say, but your home didn't sell, you know, mm. or, or we see something sell for much less than it should. And, and it, we all know 
the more marketing you do, the more demand you create, the more demand you create, the more money you make. That's how it works for a home seller. So that's a, a struggle for us right now where we're killing it with buyer leads. I mean, just lighting it up, but not necessarily to the extent with the seller leads. Yeah. Well, I think we're all dealing with that right now. So the market's hot right now. So it seems to me, and, and honestly, what you said about 20 years, I didn't realize it was 20 years. I thought it was five years. Yeah. We practically put a blog out on it a few weeks ago. It's back into the 90s. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, we, we're seeing it because I mean, I'm list, we listed houses that like, dude, I'm surprised. I, I put it on at a price that I thought was a little a, a little um, high, personally. Yeah, it's happened up. And uh, all of a sudden, you get an asking price offer right off the bat. I, we listed one in Westboro. Dude, $30,000 over asking. Like, okay, man, we'll take it. But we just got to get those sellers to jump on board. So what conversations are you having with those sellers? Or or, or, to, or what are you training your agents to say to get these guys to, to take it? Because everybody's waiting till spring right now, right? I mean... This, this interview will be out in February, so everybody's still waiting until April, May. What are you guys doing to over- offset that? Well, we try to educate sellers, and that's a big part of the reason you talked about news earlier in the interview. That's a big part of the reason that I've been so involved with news. We put out a lot of reports, a lot of blogs. We have a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple of weeks. But one of the things that we put out a few weeks ago on our website, LamakiaRealty.com, is just an article about how sellers who list in the winter sell for more money. Mm. Uh, there's no doubt about it. If you list in late January, February, you will make more money than if you list in you know, late March, April, May, just because of the simple fact of inventory being lower. So when we are engaged with those sellers, we can explain that to them. Some listen and some you know, take our advice. Some can't to, for whatever personal reasons they can't list. But we try to educate them. The trouble is you got to get to that point. And at this time of year, you know, with, uh, with presidents changing and people acting like the whole world's going to end. And, you know, um, now the Patriots in the Super Bowl, people put things off. You know, they put things off and it's easier for them to put things off at this time mm. of year. Yeah. It's kind of like in November when everybody says, call me after the holidays. You call them after the holidays. Well, it's winter. Call me in 60 days. You know, it's, yeah. it's just that time of year. Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. And it's interesting, too, because I think a lot of sellers, Anthony, right now think, What's happening is like, you know, they hear these stories about getting 30,000 over asking, getting full price, and they think that that's the market actually appreciating when really it's just uh, uh, the impact of, of the inventory. At least that's my, my opinion. I don't know what your thoughts are. You're right about that. And that's one of the things that we do a lot of training with our agents on come late spring because I always say the toughest month of the year to get a seller to be realistic about a price is June, July, August, because they see the sold statistics and they go, oh my God, my neighbor's house sold for 420. My neighbor's house sold for 600. They don't realize that neighbor went on the market in February. In early March, when there was two houses to compete with or one house or no houses to compete with, Mm. the property went under contract for over asking. Then they try to list even higher because they say, wow, mine's worth more and it doesn't sell. And they look at the realtor and say, it's the realtor's fault. So as realtors, we have to educate these people on the differences in the market and one of the biggest tools we use is the on-market snapshot to show people the difference between when the home, you know, how many homes are on the market in the winter as opposed to the summer. Do you use a snapshot? Which snapshot do you guys use? On MLS, the on-market snapshot. Oh, do you? Okay, cool. All right, good. So you're using the MLS. That's great. All right, so what do you see next? Like, what, what's your prediction? Let's hear Anthony Lamaki's prediction with the market. Like, where do you see it going? You know... It's, it, put it this way, it's certainly not going down in the next year. Inventory is just too low. So you look at last year, home sales were up. We're putting our report out. Actually, I think we're putting it out today. I think home sales, actually, the amount of homes sold last year was 10% higher than the year before. It was the biggest year for overall home sales in Massachusetts since 05. Um, but but and this goes to your point. Prices only went up 4%. Mm. So there were times during the year that people were thinking prices, oh my God, they're going up like it's crazy, you know? So I think we'll have, I don't think home sales will be up another 10% because the inventory being lower, as you mentioned, but I think prices will go up more. So I don't see any downfall in the market coming in the next year or two, but you know, do I think it'll happen eventually? Of course, there's no question. Yeah, markets, it has to. Markets always readjust. I just don't see it happening in the next year, year and a half. Beyond that, I can't really see. Yeah, it, it always adjusts, and, and no matter what it does, anyway, is is you'll adapt and will adapt, and all the uh, top people will adapt. So that's what yep. we do. You got it, my friend. So what's next for you guys? We're gonna 
just continue to do what we're doing. Uh, as I said, we've changed as a company. You know, now uh, this year is going to be our first year that probably slightly more than 50% of our revenue will be from agent sales, agent, you know, business. Um, and so we're, we're adapting to that and we're just growing the company. Uh, we opened three additional offices last year. So I'm, I'm basically going to take a breather on opening offices because all that does is make you write a lot of checks. We also built out a training room down the hall, but we're going to sit tight here for a couple of years, increase our agent count with, you know, quality agents in the various offices out closer to your market in Worcester and uh, Westford and Woburn and, um, you know, continue to grow. That, that's what we're going to do and, and, and try to con- try to continue to grow in a healthy manner. Awesome, man, my friend. Well, stay out of Worcester by the way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not even in Worcester <laughs> anymore. <laughs> We went, we went out to Westboro. We want to focus on a higher price point. Hey, that's a good move. Yeah, man, absolutely. So anyway, that said, anything else I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Um, well, let me ask you this. The listeners to this are going to be what, mostly team leaders? Uh, no, mostly real estate agents. I mean, we've got a lot of team okay. leaders, real estate agents. We've got in different sales industries. I mean, I've got auto guys listening to it, all kinds of uh, security. So yeah, we got a pretty good listenership, man. We've been growing. It's awesome. Okay, because one of the things I was going to add you know, I obviously, like you, have a lot of friends around the country with large real estate teams and companies. And the biggest thing that I think people are missing the boat on is they're not providing enough training for their agents. Yeah. And training is something that we're obsessed with here. We do it every single week. Every Wednesday, we do buyer training, seller training, and it's sales related. And then we have more of the nuts and bolts trainings on Mondays and Tuesdays for our agents. And, you know, what we find is the more we train, the more sales we have. Absolutely. Uh, and that's something that, you know, if someone said to me, what's the one thing you wish you did sooner? Uh, I would say consistent trainings on a weekly basis just sooner. I didn't do that till 2012 and um, I should have. I should have done it on a weekly basis, you know, in 2007 when we started bringing people on then. Okay, hey, you know what? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time <laughs> is today. So, Good stuff, my it. friend. And the final question for you is, what is the one thing you want our listeners to take from this interview on their path to sales mastery? I'd say training. You know, I really would. Uh, practice makes perfect. Well, it doesn't make perfect, but it improves you. And all of us, none of us are perfect. So if you're a salesperson working on your own, you need to be practicing scripts. You need to be getting all the training you can. I mean, I'll tell you one thing I've done and I don't love it because I have four children, uh, but I travel a a good amount. I probably go to a real estate event every month or every other month year round. And, you know, like I said, I don't love doing it now because I I don't, I'm not crazy about leaving my wife home with four children, but every time I go away, I pick up an idea. I pick up something new, something different. Uh, Years ago, I would only travel to events that were related to, growing your team or growing, you know, getting more leads. Now I go to realtor events. Now I go to events that there's other broker owners at with more traditional brokerages. So really wherever you're trying to go with your business, that's where you need to go with your travel. Mm. And, and, you know, there, there, one thing about this business, you can travel every week. There's good events. There's coaches out there every week. I mean, look at KW as a company. You guys have stuff all the time. So people that aren't, you know, getting on a plane and not willing to get to outside of their little shell are, are missing out. Yeah, you just nailed it. That's the biggest thing. Sometimes we have to get on a plane because, uh, you know, sometimes you'll be the, uh, you know, the biggest fish in the, in the small pond. And when you get on a plane, you're like, what? These guys are doing 300 million, 400 million. What? Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, it really opens your eyes to what's possible. Hey, by the way, uh, great training coming up. I'd love to have you come as my guest, ESO Expansion Systems, uh, on March 7th. So I'm going to shoot you an invitation for that. And if you can come out to Westboro, we'd love to see you there. All right. Send me the information. I'll see if I can do it. All right, man. Thank you for your time. Hey, really appreciate it, okay? Thank you for having me, David. I appreciate it. If you're anything like me and you love podcasts, I guarantee you're going to love audiobooks. And audible.com is the largest resource of audiobooks. I'm super excited about my partnership with audible.com where I can offer you a free audiobook. All you have to do is simply go to www.davidsfreebook.com and sign up and you get yourself a free book. Yes, absolutely free, never charged, no membership. If you love the service, then obviously continue using it, but this is completely free. Again, 
davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free audiobook and enjoy. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.